We are live at the Genzio Media House here at East Denver. It's the last day of the main event, and I'm here with Denton, the co-founder and CEO of Moonring. Was this your first time in East Denver? Uh, this is my second year here. Okay. So um, yeah, familiar with this with the town. Um, very cool, very cool place to be in. Yeah. Amazing. Well, I mean, I, I'm very excited to get into what you've built. But before we do that, tell me a little a little bit about your background. Yeah. Um, so. I come from a background of like uh, like research, like uh, university research. So I did neuroscience. I did like how brains form memories, basically. Um, that was like in my previous life, and then around some time in 2018, got into Ethereum, um, and then DeFi summer came, and that kind of like blew my mind a bit. So one story I like to tell is that I'm a very like non-financially literate person until I knew about Ethereum and DeFi. So I basically learned about DeFi before I learned about TradFi, which is kind of funny, Interesting. <laughs> given, that, given that I'm like already nearly 30 by that time. Um, so yeah, that was, that was cool. And then I started working in the industry, you know, various capacities, um, started staking, you know, at home, learned what the hell is a CLI or whatnot. And then, uh, yeah, I got, you know, pretty deep into the weeds in that and then started working in various uh, projects like community building, marketing, business, fundraising, and then now finally uh, start to start my own project here. Okay. Yeah, well, so, okay. Yeah. So tell us about the project. Yeah. So Moonring is like an alternative to like a healthware uh, wearable. Like uh, if you use the Oura Ring or a uh, Apple Watch or Whoop Band, it does similar kind of like a health care and wellness tracking through the sensors inside the ring. Yeah, that's but that's a basically pretty established kind of product category now. Um, we're building the Web three kind of data monetization on top of that, but also the gamification and social aspects onto it. Oh, okay, so, wow. Yeah, so we're kind of like, well, my vision is to take this entire category forwards with this kind of new primitives that we can do on chain. You know, with tokens, with NFTs, with. Uh, new mechanisms that we design when these things all interact together. Gotcha. Yeah. Okay. Fascinating. So, first of all, tell us how it set, uh, you know differentiates from how Moonring differentiates from all the other um, wearable, specifically the wearable rings. Yeah. That are on the market right now. Yeah. So um, I think there's like three main things that it does very differently. Uh, to start off. Um, data ownership and monetization. I think that's the most like obvious one uh, for what we're doing. So most of these rings, they'll compare your data, uh, they'll collect your data and they'll analyze it and do like processing uh, for their own kind of benefit. But for us, we're helping you to monetize the data through our partnership and our like decentralized data platform. And then reoccurring, uh, bringing that revenue to recur uh, accrue value back to the user themselves. So for example, you can like claim tokens every day by contributing your data to us. Mm. Obviously this is going to be like an opt-in, like consent only thing, right. if you, only if you choose to do so. But basically you can earn by wearing the ring, which is kind of crazy because a lot of these, uh, you know, incumbent companies, they're charging you subscription for the software, um, you know, f um, and then they don't, bring any of the value back to the right. user. So we're turning that kind of value accrual funnel, like, you know, you know, flipping it on its head. Nice. Okay. Yeah. So that's, that's one of the key differentiators. The second one is that um, a lot of these trackers give you like lots of really good data, like amazing data and present it in a really cool way, but it doesn't necessarily motivate you to take action on it. So they might give you some sort of tips like, oh, you should sleep earlier or you should take more steps, you know, tomorrow you're too sedentary. But where's the incentive to that? And that's where the Web3 uh, token side of things comes in. This is like our most powerful weapon, right, to design these kind of um, incentive alignment mechanisms that could push people to do certain things. So in this case, we're using the tokens to incentivize people to act on their behavior that the ring is detecting from you. So for this one example I like to give is that if you uh, haven't slept well for the past week, say for example, you're in East Denver. Um, right. <laughs> you've been sleeping, no, no, just sleeping <laughs> yeah, uh, four hours or three hours for the yeah. past three days, right? right? 
it will give you a prompt to say, okay, why don't we set a goal? Why don't we get your sleep um, back on track? So you can set a goal, seven hours on average for the, for the next five days. And then we put in a staking mechanism or a prediction market mechanism into that. So you're then incentivized, you're committing financial value into your behavioral outcome. Oh, that is cool. Yeah. That gets really interesting. So you're, okay. So yeah. you guide us through that. Yeah. So you're now responsible for your own behavior. Um, if you achieve it, you can get a higher APR, uh, either matched by the, like the token emissions or some other mechanism, uh, TPC for that. But if not, then we can have slashing mechanisms, which is very like crypto native, right? If you're staking, you're not doing your thing, you get slashed. So say you say, for example, you put in oh. 10 bucks. If you complete your sleeping goal, you get 13 or 15 bucks back. Okay. If not, you might have, you can only get eight. That is and, yeah. fascinating. Yeah. So you're directly rewarding people for doing what they say they're going to do. Yeah. Wow. Like putting a, a layer of accountability um you know food incentive mechanism designed to your own wellness okay fascinating this this is really cool but at what point let's say someone's you know on top of their game yeah and they're killing it and they just yeah. hit you know they're 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 stake they're committing yeah and they're putting their money where their mouth is and then they're actually hitting the mark at yeah. what point are you guys going to be like oh this yeah. is not we're not willing to yeah you know. so this is uh where the kind of like uh my game a gaming kind of uh, interests come in so we'll have a difficulty curve for this so you'll have a difficulty curve yeah so they have to continuously yeah increase so that the 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 baseline is like based on your averages and that's moving as you improve your health or oh, wow. not improve your health you know kind of like you know bitcoin mining you know like um when there's too much emission it automatically uh you know increases the difficulty curve so that the emissions come down wow yeah so, okay yeah so those mechanisms are inbuilt you know into the into the incentivization layer gotcha wow okay this is fascinating um i'm curious you mentioned a token and you're this is all being paid in, in your native token mm -hmm. so have you launched the token already? Are you planning on launching the token? What's the story? Yeah, so the token will probably come in later this year. We still have to do like audits on all of the mechanisms. Um, we don't want this to be just like a very, you know, superfluous like token. Like this is actually linked to what you're going to do. Um, it has some value to it. So we want to get this, you know, really nailed before we launch the token. And also when we do like value accrual from the data back to the token, there's like buyback and burn mechanisms. There's a kind of like relationships that we have to establish with the data uh, demand drivers, you know, the people right. who's going to buy the data. So it'll take a bit of time before we get all of that, you know, in one place. And then once that happens, we'll launch it. Fascinating. Okay. Yeah. Cool. So there was there was actually one more thing that I wanted to let's add, hear it. Um, that was uh, you know different from other products, and that is to add a kind of social element to it as well. Because a lot of times when you're wearing these things, you're like, okay, let's go running, but like I have to call my friend on like WhatsApp or or Telegram to go run with me. Yeah, <laughs> that's kind of like a bit cumbersome. You know, right. you can have your own groups and stuff, but it's not a you know, very sleek experience in terms of that. So we're building the social fi uh, mechanisms to that. So it kind of relates back to my previous point where you're committing to your goals. Yeah. What if now you are accountable for other people's financial outcome? <laughs> so, oh, wow. so your friend can vouch for you sleeping enough hours. Interesting. Yeah. But also you're not only putting your money where your mouth is, you're also putting in a way your social credit, the credibility in yeah. a way, right? So it's, yeah. it's, I'm going to say I'm going to do this. And if there's a social element like, to it, and yeah. if I fail, like, I'm not just losing money, I'm losing essentially social credit. Is that right? Yeah. I mean, you will built up a reputation for not, you know, getting up. Right? Yeah. Yeah. There we go. I mean, we intuitively know who, who's like that already, right? Yeah. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> so we can, we can do it in lots of ways. We can have like, you can make a group with your friends or you can have someone anonymous that you don't know. Actually, in a way, that's even better for accountability, right? <laughs> right. <laughs> but um, I feel like it depends on the person. Yeah, 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 yeah. So you're you're then accountable for someone else's financial outcome, be it just like a few dollars or something, but it's still there. It's a it's a it's a nudge, you know, towards the right direction. 
And so, yeah, we have all of these mechanisms where you can uh, be, a, be held accountable for each other, but also be, build this like very encouraging kind of like environment. Mm. Where okay, you're not really getting enough. Let's let's send you a message gotcha. so that you're not to complete it. Absolutely, um, and hopefully we can build these you know very real connections between people through that way. That is because if you've all been through something, yeah, absolutely, yeah, it makes that connection much stronger. Misery loves company, but it also goes to show like even after I can be super fit, right? My goal is like right up here. I'm doing like I don't know like four minutes for my five k five k run. Uh, four minutes per kilometer for my five kilometer. right and i can like have my i'm like eight minutes here i'm just beginning they're still held accountable for each other despite their differences right but if you're actually in a real run club they're not gonna really talk to each other all that much right yeah interesting so yeah fascinating and does, what does a social component look like is it is it uh, is it yeah what is what is the actual interface look like is this something that's in the future are you guys currently building that yeah we're we're building that out at the moment but it'll kind of look like a feed you know like a social feed uh and we we plan to integrate this into like farcaster where you have like a frame and you can you know interact on on that feed as well directly so it should be cool it's still coming i mean the software uh, and the interface is still being built as we speak so i don't have any final images for that yet. amazing yeah. um well, that's super exciting, super cool. I am curious. Um, I have a few more questions about the product itself. Mm -hmm. When someone buys this, yeah. what data can they expect to be seeing? Yeah, so um, it goes to the tech of the ring, I guess. There's a heart rate, motion, and temperature sensor to it. And then from that, we infer uh, what you're doing, like your sleep, uh, your stress level, whether you're exercising or not. Uh, that's the kind of like calculation that we do based on okay. the output of those three sensors. Um, so yeah, you can get your sleep score, you can get your uh, sleep quality patterns, you can get your stress, uh, like what percentage of time you spend in each bracket of stress level, you know, uh, and then you get a score generated off of that, as well as your step count and calorie estimation. Absolutely fascinating. Um, and where can people find this right now? Yeah, so we're, we're selling them on our website at the moment. So moonring.ai is the website and you can pre-order. Uh, you could literally order it from there and then we ship it from Hong Kong where we're based. Uh, we also often are in these like big conferences. So when I come, I'm like, let's be a traveling salesman. <laughs> and it's like in my luggage, I got a few models and sizes for people to try out. If they're happy, then uh, they can take one right from there. Cool. Yeah. And how much do they go for? They go for 350 USD, so slightly less than the oil ring. Okay. Um, <laughs> but we don't have a we don't have a subscription or anything. Okay. And there's no subscription. No, no, not for the moment. Okay. So you guys are live on your website. It seems like you have a very cool product over here, and a huge vision. How are you guys get, going to market? Yeah. So um, these established companies already have like very big distribution channels. Like you can buy them, you know, at the brick and mortar stores and whatnot. So we're, we're taking a very Web3 uh, focused uh, community building kind of approach. We're working with Abstract. So the Pudgy Penguin L2, myself and my co-founder are also um, Pudgy Penguin holders ourselves. So we're tapping into that community to help us spread word and good vibes and the possibility of such a product uh, within their ecosystem. So we, we did this um, activation in Consensus Hong Kong, where we like uh, plastered a tram. So in Hong Kong Island, there's trams that run along the city. And then we had like a tram with the pudgy and the ring and then the abstract uh, ecosystem. It's like, a, it's like a very cool activation there. And then uh, just norm, normal people who are just, you know, hustling around, they could see this thing like moving along with a cute pudgy holding a big ring. Yeah, oh, yeah that's great. <laughs> yeah, it's super cool. Uh, we did like a, like a campaign where you had to like chase the tram and then like take pictures of it uh, to get giveaways for the ring, but also other, you know, other merchandise. So they've been super helpful, like nothing but grateful to Luca and the team uh, to have been super supportive since day one uh, for us doing this. Um, yeah, it's been crazy, really. I mean, we didn't expect such a, like, like warm welcome, you know? Like, we were just, we felt like at home from day one, uh, gone hiking with them, taking them to eat and 
fun around the city. Wow. That's what it's about. Like, like they're, they're really the embodiment of this like social connection building. Like they're super good at that. If we can proliferate, pardon my pun, <laughs> proliferate that yeah. to other, you know, um, parts of the society and parts of the consumer culture as well. Um, that would be that would be a very meaningful thing to do. That is so fascinating how an NFT connection can collection can create such a beautiful community and yeah. you can literally that like that can be the kind of the foundation yeah. and the starting point for launching an entire business. Yeah. It's yeah. so cool. It's kind of crazy. If it's you fascinating, it. yeah. 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 So we don't like do like super traditional marketing yet. Um, I guess once we get to a certain scale, that's something we have to think about. Absolutely. But at the moment, this is very much about person-to-person -person connection. Like, I want you to be well. This thing can help you maybe achieve some of that. That's great. Let's give it a go. I love it. Yeah. Well, Denton, this was great. Yeah. Thank you so much for coming by and yeah. educating me on a little bit of the space and what you guys are up to. Yeah, I just And I look, I look forward to following you guys. Thank you. Yeah, thanks for having me. Brought to you by Hedera and Foresight Ventures. Hey, what's up? But it's not something Gen Z is afraid of. If you want to survive, you got to build a house. Three, two, one. Ladies and gentlemen, the back of the Gen Z media house. Oswald, thanks so much for joining us today.